Hey everybody, welcome back to CSS3 in 30 days. Today is day number 12 and we are gonna be playing around with something called CSS variables. There's also, you can call it custom properties, uh, but that's not as exciting. CSS variables, especially for uh, developers and de designers out there who are familiar with variables in languages like PHP or jQuery, or even using CSS preprocessor languages like SAS and LESS and SCSS, where you use variables, it really extends the functionality of CSS or whatever programming language you're using that are using the variables. So in this case, we're just gonna be using plain vanilla CSS3, but you do have access to something called custom properties or AKA CSS variables. So jump over here in our browser. We're just gonna be coding a couple simple boxes. Nothing crazy, but the neat thing about this, everything we're doing here from the measurements to the colors are, are used and created or styled rather via custom properties or CSS variables. So why don't we just jump in and get started? So here in my code editor, I'm back with Atom. Hopefully it behaves well. Uh, we have day number 12 CSS variables. Go ahead and download that folder, open it up in your code editor, and then let's jump right back in. Here in the index, you're just gonna see the usual that we've been using these past 12 days. And just down here, you're gonna see in the section, just two divs, one with the class of box and one with the class of box, box two. And of course you can go down to the final result and check out uh, how that's coded up. In the final CSS, there are a lot of comments and notes in here to help you understand why we are doing certain things, explaining the custom properties and everything like that. But what we're gonna concern ourselves with is this file, sandbox.css, as usual, and we're going to get started. Let's start off by selecting the sandbox class, and within there, what we're going to do is declare three different variables or custom properties. And the way this works with custom properties in CSS is the, when you define that specific custom property within a selector, it is its scope is that selector. So if you wanted the these variables to be accessible across the entire website and all styles, you would use a selector like uh, body or something like uh, root is another selector, the root element of a tree representing the document. You can use those selectors if you want these specific variables to be accessible throughout the entire document, something like a color or a font size or maybe branding, specifically branding colors. But we're just gonna use, in this case, sandbox. So all of the variables are, uh, its scope is this selector. So the variables won't work if I am trying to use those variables on elements outside of sandbox. So this is how you start a selector, sorry, this is how you start a variable. You start out with two dashes and then you name the variable. So I'm gonna say primary dash color and I'm gonna say orange red. Another variable here, I'm gonna say secondary color, dash color that is, hot pink. And then double dash base dash measurement. 20 pixels. So three variables. It's not going to do anything if I save this and check it out in the browser. It's not going to actually do anything because those aren't actual styles. They're just variables. Now let's go back down here and let's access the variable like so. So I'm going to select the sandbox and then box. So these are both of the boxes. And let's just first of all text align center. And now what we're going to do is let's actually add one more variable within sandbox box. So now this variable is only accessible within this particular scope, within box, within sandbox. So you can't actually use it outside of this selector or these elements rather. So I'm going to say double dash, text color. It's gonna be F3, F3, F3. Okay. Now here's how we access the variable. So I'm gonna say color, and we have to open it up with var, 
and then opening and closing parentheses, and then a semicolon, of course. And then all you do here is just call the name of the variable that you created. Double dash and text color, text dash color. Now, if I save that and then go over to the browser, you're gonna see that you cannot see the text. And that's because it is the same color as the background in this case, or pretty close. And it's, it's centered. So we know that that variable is working. Let's continue and style the background. And we're gonna say var, open closing variable, or var, double dash, primary dash color. And let's go ahead and say margin. And whoops, there we go. And I'm gonna say var. This one's gonna be base dash measurement, which as we know is 20 pixels. So go ahead and save that, check it out in the browser. Now it's doing something. The background is that primary color, which is orange red, and the base measurement is of margin is 20 pixels. It is working, so this is nice. So now one other cool thing that you can do with the measurements is you can actually do math by using the calc function. So let me show you how to do that. Height, we're gonna say var, and then base measurement, dash, dash measurement. But we don't wanna just leave it there. Let's wrap this in calc, and then semicolon. And we're gonna calculate this, but then we actually have to perform a calculation. So outside of this, uh, so this is the first argument here, and then there's one more times, we're gonna say times 10. So we're gonna calculate the var base measurement, or the base measurement, times 10 and that should equal, <laughs> excuse me, 200 pixels. And then I'm gonna copy that, paste it, I'm gonna change this to width, I want it to be the same because it is a box, and then I want the line height to in fact be the same as well. Now if I save that, I should have perfect boxes. Head over to the browser, there we go, all using the variables and the CSS here, let's check it out. What shows up? So we've got box, and then if we look at the styles, It actually is showing up as var, text color, primary color, measurement. It's actually showing those variables. It's not showing the final calculated number in there, at least in this developer tools there. And so I find that pretty interesting. Um, now let's do, let's go back to our code editor and we're gonna do one final thing here. If you scroll down beyond that, we're gonna say sandbox and then box two. We wanna make that color of box two different. Background, we've already set up a variable for it. Var, double dash, secondary, dash color. Save that. In the browser, we've got our orange red box, number one, and our hot pink box, number two. The colors and the measurements are calculated and created using custom properties, also known as CSS variables. That is exciting. I hope that shed some light and some insight on some cool things that you could do with CSS variables. Instead of having to go in and create, uh, you know, install preprocessors and in different uh, CSS languages like SAS and less, for certain projects that might not be that necessary or too much uh, work. Maybe just a simple landing page and you just wanna get something up quickly, you can use CSS variables. Make sure you check at the bottom of this page here, you can see the CSS3 styles, uh, how compatible they are with major browsers. If you click that, it'll take you to a page called Can I Use? And then you can type in something like CSS variables, custom properties. It permits the declaration and usage of cascading variables and style sheets. And you can see here how compatible they are. So with IE11, it's not supported. Uh, oh well. And Edge. It looks like it's partial support and full support here on 16. Firefox, fully supported. Chrome, fully supported. Safari, Opera, iOS, Safari, fully supported. Opera Mini, not so much. Android, 56, yes. 4.4, uh, no. And Chrome for Android. So we're pretty darn um, covered here. So that's pretty neat. Uh, you can see up here the percentage here. So the global percentage is about 77.9%. Um, compatible. So you can rest assured that you're pretty safe using CSS variables, also known as custom properties. I hope this lesson was exciting for you and gave you some ideas and quick 
hot tip, if you wanna get access to all of these 30 lessons, all at once rather than waiting day by day. Maybe you're ready to take on a challenge and get everything all at once. All you gotta do is pay five bucks, you get all the 30 days, plus a full 30 day membership to Code College where you get access to all of my coding courses ever, and just for five bucks. And then after that 30 days, if you wanna stay, then it's just $34 a month afterwards. You can cancel at any time. Basically, it's a subscription-based model. Think Netflix for coding tutorials. And if you don't wanna keep going, then all you gotta do is cancel before that 30-day window is up. So once again, all you gotta do is head to bradhussey.ca slash gimmecss3. There should be a link up here on the screen. Go ahead and go there. You'll get the first month membership of Code College for five bucks. That'll get you all the 30 days of these lessons plus every coding course I've ever made and you can have a heyday there, and if you wanna stick around, then it's just 34 bucks a month. Hope to see you in there. If not, I'll see you tomorrow for day number 13. Bye now.